Frontier Village isn't the only place they can reuse intro shots. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we went around Colony 6 and quite frankly did a boatload of reconstruction. There is little to no rubble left in this place. It's just brimming with life now. This time, we're gonna go around the Bionis and see just how many things have changed. After all, in the second battle between the two titans, its body shifted so many things are different. Some areas are geographically different, others just have new things for you to do. As such, I want to open up by talking to Dulland. I alluded that he- Whoa, dude, your face is terrifying. I alluded that he would have a side quest for us earlier, and that we would do it a little bit later. Well, actually, I said much later, but I guess with how long these videos are, two videos is much later. <laughs> Orc, okay. In all seriousness, let's talk to him. Hello. Ah, I've been looking for you. I'm glad I found you. I'm taking care of the High Antia who fled the to the refugee camp. However, we have cause for concern. There are not enough provisions to go around. Hmm, a problem. Yeah, that sounds bad. But we don't need you to find more provisions for us. Well, not really. We need you to get back the stock we stored in Tefra Cave. We stored it in a warehouse, but I've lost the key. I tried going along the route that opened up when the Bionis moved. That used to be the main path. But now the place is crawling with powerful monsters. I barely made it out with my life. You have risked so much to help these people. Homs truly are noble people. Well, you could say that, but I was hoping I might get something in return. <laughs> oh, I see. It appears that my admiration was premature. Wow, Melia, you are harsh. But then again, he kind of deserved it. He's a businessman. He's not running some kind of charity. <laughs> but I know when it's come time to stand up and be counted. These people need help, and I'm the one who's going to help them. So I'm asking you, won't you help the refugees? Find the key and bring the food from the warehouse to the camp. We have securing provisions. We need to collect a trader spare key from Trader Stopover in Tefra Cave. Now, what he was saying there is that Tefra Cave changed a lot, and a new pathway opened up, or rather an old pathway that caved in, opened up once again, once the Bionis moved. We need to go over to Vilia Lake in order to see exactly what he was showing us. This is one such example of an area drastically changing with the Bionis' body moving. Yeah, when you thought these areas were big already, there are new places to explore in some of them. I don't mean to make it sound like every area's got tons of new stuff, but... When you thought this world was huge and there was tons to do already, it still manages to play a trump card over you. So, upon arriving in Vilia Lake, I want to do, believe it or not, gem crafting. This will be very instrumental in helping you do this. In fact, I would dare say the side quest is impossible to do unless you do a little bit of gem crafting right now. What you want to do is go over to your best orange... Uh, okay, good, I don't have any, like, five crystals except for that one. You want to go over to your best orange ether crystals, and you want to look for earth cloak effects. You want to craft the biggest, best earth cloak gems that you can possibly muster with what you've got. Once you've done that, go ahead and craft away. Once again, Shulk and Ryan are my best combination for a strong flame, because we only have one property. Strong flame is exactly what we're going to get, so let's do it! Mega Heat! We got... Oh, wow, already got what I needed. We have two Earth Cloak 5 gems. They reduce detection range of ground monsters by 50% each. Upon equipping those two gems, we have already reached the maximum value of 60% reduction on detection range of ground enemies. I've decided to switch over to Ryan for this, just because... In case I do get spotted, I want a character that can at least take a few hits for some really powerful enemies so we can still get away. And I only really ever had Melia in the lead for this because she commented on that side quest. So now that we've done that, we can go onward. And what Dolan was saying back there when we accepted said side quest, he mentioned that there were High Antia refugees that were in the refugee camp on Bionis Leg, the very same one that Colony 6 residents were using at the start of our adventure. Many High Antia are either presumed dead or missing in action, whereas the remaining High Antia have fled to various locations around Bionis, that being one of them. We'll be going over this in greater detail at a later point, but just know that a lot of things have changed, and not just in the world itself, also with the minor characters. But, as you can see, we have arrived in the Bone Corridor, a new location in Tefra Cave. This whole place was caved in with rocks the first time we went here and we couldn't go here. And right at the beginning of this, we have a heart-to-heart -heart we can view. The Legend of the Spider. Sounds like a children's picture book of sorts. Who knows, maybe it is. Let's find out. Look, Ryan. This geological formation. It's incredible. It sure is. This breeze ain't bad either. Ryan, I hope you're wearing pants below this shot. Just saying. You don't normally want to talk about geology and the weather. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm a bit on edge. Just tell it to me straight, Shulk. Is it me, or are there a ton of spiders around here? 
Yes, there are quite a few. Oh yeah, now I remember! You're scared of spiders! Ryan, are you okay? You don't look so good. Sorry, Shulk. Mind if we take a break for a bit? That's not a problem at all. Hmm, I'm just trying to think of what you, when your phobia started. If I remember right, it was that time when... Come on, man, don't remind me! I played a prank on you! I'm sorry, Ryan, I shouldn't have stuck that spider in your shoe. Too right, you shouldn't! When I went to put my shoe on, it nearly jumped out of my skin! You should be glad it didn't make me scared of shoes! Don't make me feel bad, I said I was sorry. Yeah, I know, we were just kids back then anyway. Boys will be boys and all that. That reminds me. Do you remember why I put that spider in your shoe? Um, not really. You hit a caterpillar in my sock drawer, did you forget? Haha, <laughs> oh yeah, sorry man. Hey Shulk, don't you have a phobia? There's something you're afraid of, but I can't remember what. It's caterpillars, Ryan. <laughs> and then him scratching his head. Ryan, you are just the greatest. You still find new ways to surprise me. I never get tired of when it is indeed your time to shine. <laughs> so, uh, oh crap, I need to get away from this. Um, yeah, these enemies are like in the level 90s. I took that much damage from a tiny little vang. I could technically be careful here. I guess this enemy is not vision type or sound type, so I can just run right through without trouble though. But yeah, you will have some issues if you do that. But that heart to heart, I always just thought was really funny, especially the oh crap, um, crud, crud, crud. I didn't know those were sound type. What I was trying to show is that at the end of this corridor are some ether crystals, and I believe that if we get these, I'll need to actually check my inventory after this to be absolutely sure on this. Uh, ooh, uh, we did we just get an achievement? I saw experience, uh, crystallized luck. Yes, we did. Awesome. These ether crystals are special. This is our first Aether Crystal deposit that yields level 5 crystals. These are the highest level Aether Crystals you are able to obtain at all. There are level 6 gems that we have seen before on other characters like Alvis and Dixon. And if you do get like Mega Heat or you just happen to get a really, really good um, uh, gem crafting going with uh, level 5 crystals, you can indeed make level 6 gems, but there are no natively level 6 crystals. Just wanted to let you know about that. But um, I do have to say, going back to that heart to heart after I got interrupted, it wouldn't be so bad, Ryan, if you were afraid of shoes. I mean, after all, we've seen what you look like with your shoes off. Everyone in this game naturally has a pair of sandals for feet. It's not really all that bad. <laughs> um, but seriously, I want to run through here just kind of as fast as possible because I just don't really want to be bothered. Look at this. Okay. Those are like tiny little Antal babies, and they're like level, like, okay, let me lock out of those. Yeah, level 93. 93. I have no idea how they are that strong, but... Apparently the genes are really strong in these. Uh, we have some bunivs that are really powerful, even though they don't really look like powerful, that, that much more powerful than other bunivs. But uh, more importantly than the buniv of death that we're being chased by, we've discovered the Heavenly Window, a secret area. Gives us a ton of experience. We're already up to level 73 and... Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap! Okay, back at the Heavenly Window. That monster over there. Protective Torquidon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Torquidon? Either way, it's an aerial monster, it's not affected by your Earth Cloak gem, so it can be really problematic if you are not hugging this wall, because it's got a pretty decent line of sight. So, where we need to go is right over here. It's being guarded by Erratic Goliante. This is a Vision-type monster, but because you crafted those Earth Cloak gems, at least I hope you did, you don't actually need to fight it to go through this doorway. You can sneak right past him, and if you go in there... You'll see that guarding that is a satisfied Gogol that is level 96. And if you are careful enough about how you're stepping, you can indeed get that. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'm going to try. So it's right there on the campfire right in front of it. And let me see if I can approach from the side, maybe. I'm probably going to need to like run away and do this as it's going back to position. Yeah, okay. Okay, basically what we need to do is, I've heard of people being able to go up there with their uh, Earth Cloak gems and being able to just trick it out. But the more reliable method that I've heard of is that you just kind of want to go back behind these crates. You want to switch to a character that can do really long range attacks. So once again, Melia is coming in handy in the side quest beyond just commenting on it. And what you want to do is go ahead and get into a battle with it. Call your allies to your side with uh, Art, um, ZR and Down. And you just want to basically use a ranged attack on it and hide behind these crates. Simple as that. 
after it goes long enough without being able to attack you, it will just simply give up on fighting you. And once it does that, you will just be able to go up and collect the item, no problem. Hi there, buddy. Who's a scary little Gogol? You are. Yeah, that's right. Your face. There we go. The battle just automatically ended because it could not attack me. And when it goes back into position, it'll be facing away. Thus letting you with your Earth, Earth Cloak gem able to run up and uh, get the Trader Spare here. Actually, I guess you don't even need the Earth Cloak gem. Melia didn't have it equipped. That was still on Ryan. So, yeah. You just really need the Earth Cloak gem to get past this guy. And that's about it. This side quest is thrown at you when you're like level 70 and they expect it to go beat level 90s. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to be cheap right back at this one. I'm sorry. Back in the heavenly window, though, there is this really thin beam of light coming down from a hole in the ceiling. It should look familiar to you. That is because in the Spring of Grief on the lowest level of Tefer Cave, that same light is there. It is actually shining directly down through all of Tefer Cave. So if you swear that you've seen something like this before, that would be why. The heavenly window being a secret area, as you would guess, is just crawling with rewards, and I don't just mean experience and that quest objective. We have a massive ether crystal deposit right here. You bet I want to grab these, considering just how good five, level 5 Aether Crystals are, why wouldn't I? There's even more new areas in Tefra Cave than what we've seen already. This pathway does lead on and there's other pathways as well, but it's crawling with monsters that are like level 90. Literally, they are Arachno. We're going to be tackling the rest of Tefra Cave another time. With those big rewards in our pockets, or rather absorbed into Ryan's pecs, if that animation of him collecting ether crystals back in the bone corridor was any indication of how they do it. Um, we're back in Vilia Lake, back on track with securing provisions. We want to go into this cave behind the fall, should look very familiar. And behind this waterfall, we saw this door, I believe, back on our first visit. After all this time, we can finally open it and see just what was in here. The emergency warehouse is a location that you can get experience from, and... You get the emergency rations contained within that small little orb, and I thought Shulk was an NPC standing in here for a second because he blended in that one with the clothes he was wearing. With those in hand, let's go back to Colony 6 where those rations are needed. Or excuse me, back at the refugee camp, would be nice if Dolan said that he was going to be leaving for that place after we accepted the side quest so we didn't go to Colony 6 looking like an idiot trying to figure out where he was in the back of junks, but oh well. So... This refugee camp, I do have to say, just being in like a shaded area of Bionis Leg like this, with just how green and just how luscious everything looks, even though this place is associated with a lot of bad memories for people, I would just love to just come here for an afternoon and just kind of like lay back in the grass. It'd be the greatest. Hello there again, Dolan, with your scary eyes. We have the provisions that you asked for. The High Antia aren't really cut out for this type of life. If we can fill some bellies, they might feel less desperate. Well, that's that. Or maybe not. Anyway, here's a little something to say thank you. We got 36,000 gold, 42,500 experience, no items though. Just kind of a nice side quest you can do. There is an update to the affinity chart with that, which I don't recall any NPC besides Dullin being involved, but I guess it registered him on the affinity chart, even though we already talked to him. I'm not really sure. Uh, oh, it changes location to Bionis Leg. Duh, okay, I'm sorry. For whatever reason, I thought he went back to Colony 6, but I guess not. And next to him is a High Antia refugee that we can talk to. Have you seen any Telethia? I'm glad we escaped to here, but there are not enough men. There are also very few of us who can fight. We must be ready. That is why I am keeping watch. Sounds like history is repeating itself a little bit for the High Antia. They're now in similar straits to what the Homs were at the start of this journey. But that is all we can do around Colony 6 as well as the Bionis Leg for now. While I would like to go into more detail on what's going on with the High Antia and just what their whole situation is, I think there's going to be time for that later. For now, I say we go back to where this all started, Colony 9. We'll see just what has changed here as well. We want to go over to the military district specifically. Upon getting here, there are many things we can do now that we could not do before. You need to have at least cleared Makana's core in order to see these things. First off, right over here, um, there, we have Miller. What's your last name? Terry? <laughs> okay, I'm just dumb. So, he's been looking for us, and he mentions that Captain Leader has gone missing. He's talking about Captain Emmy Leader, who wished to be that Lieutenant Colonel all that time ago. If you recall, she had to take that test by sparring against Kent's, and she lost in a single blow. That is exactly what he is referencing. She's been gone ever since then. Could you find the Captain for us? We'd search for ourselves, but we're on guard duty. 
And the furthest afield we've been able to search is Tefford Cave. Never heard that word before in my life. I wonder if it's an English thing. Uh, besides, if there's anyone that can persuade her, it's you. Why me? You were just some geeky boy locked away in that lab, but now you're our hero, wielding that sword to save us all. What do you mean, hero? I mean, you're our symbol of hope. Just like the captain's the symbol of hope for the Defense Force. No matter what's transpired, she is still a shining example to us all. I don't think it'll be long before she'll shine as brightly as you. She'd never admit it in public, but that's what she's aiming for. She wants to be like you. So that's how I know if you talk to her, she'll come back to us. Maybe the dream that she held so dear can still come true. Do you really think she'll listen to me? A hero isn't just a monster-felling tough guy. A hero is someone who has the power to inspire. Will you do it? We have a young captain's trust. We need to go find Emmy Leader. She can be pretty much anywhere in all of Bionis, and it mentions that we need to give her a letter of some sort even though we haven't gotten one. See, it seems like he'll make that come to pass. Once you find her, make sure you give her a hard time about skiving? That's another word I've never heard before in my life. Too many European English dialects for a game localized in Europe, yeah. Um, it is also worth mentioning that back when Emmy Leader had to take that test all that time ago, if you remember that side quest, you had the option of giving her a Nop on Claymore or a Carbo Shield to use in the fight. Depending on what you gave her, your side quest might differ from mine. Of course, at the end of this video, you'll see what that is. So, where in the world is Emmy Leader, exactly? Well, probably in the last area that you would ever expect. Unless you peek through the quest bar that I crafted for you to look down at, yeah. She is in the mining base in the ether mines. Yeah, remember that place? We went there a total of one time, and there was really nothing else for us to do there because most of it caved in, but... This area is still standing, and sure enough, if you walk around a bit, where... Wait, oh, there she is! Jeez! In the small room, the camera wasn't really cooperative, so I couldn't really see her too easily. There you are. Shulk, did you come to laugh at me? No, that's not why I'm here. Miller asked for me to find you. A letter? What is this about? There are messages from so many people. Miller, Raul, Minnie, Dorothy, Monica, Andreas, even Lieutenant Colonel Kantz and old Jan. There are even some people I don't really know. Let me read over it. They're all so naive expecting anything from a fool like me. I'm just a weak little girl. I can't do anything. That's not true. Look, you have so many people offering you support. If I didn't have my friends, I couldn't have made it this far. So... You're lying. You have that Monado thingy. Not anymore, we don't. This is just a replica, girl. <laughs> I do. But I couldn't have got this far with the Monado alone. I'm only joking. I understand now. It's because your friends are there for you. Exactly. No matter how hard things get, Ryan and the others are there. Together we can overcome absolutely anything. So you too can let your friends help you. Then you can achieve anything. You're right. Those guys may be naive, but they want to help me. I must do my best to repay their kindness. Now you get it. That's the spirit. I can't believe I'm hearing this from you. You used to be so weak. It's funny how things turn out. There is still a possibility that I can end up like you. Right. I'm gonna head back home. I won't give up. I'll try taking the Lieutenant Colonel test again. Do your best. We're behind you all the way. Thank you, Shulk. Don't be embarrassed, but I want to be a brave hero just like you. I'm so happy you believe in me. Shulk really has changed a lot from the start of this journey. He was just a weak weapons researcher back when all this began, but now he really is the one that protects everyone else. And I have to say, he really shows a lot of bravery. We got Shulk's fifth skill branch! Yeah, really, we've been getting all these fourth skill branches for everyone, but yeah, we actually have our first instance of a fifth skill branch. How about we go check that out? And I am going to have a very hard time checking it out by going into the arts menu. Didn't mean to click on that. It looks so good to have this screen completed at last. It looks beautiful just having it all filled in. Well, okay, the skills themselves aren't filled in, but you get what I mean. Bravery will increase Shulk's critical hit rate by 2% when it is equipped. As for the skills themselves, Fate Evasion grants experience when the future is changed. Hero's Privilege allows low-value items to be offered when trading 20% uh, trading bonus, so it'll make it easier for you to trade for various items. Lone Warrior grants agility up when a party member is incapacitated 20% for 30 seconds. Ultimate Defense boosts physical and either defense for the entire party by 10%. And now, Glorious Future. 
Shulk's talent gauge fills up to 100% upon getting a vision. There is no situation in which you will not be able to use a Monado art to change the future. This is an excellent skill, and you bet I want to go out for it right away. Screw whatever I was getting at the end of Integrity. Nothing beats these. Though, I don't mean to imply that Integrity is a less important skill than Bravery. We used a lot of Integrity this time, and we got a lot done. We explored the new regions of Tefer Cave, at least some of them. We helped out Colony 6 even more, we returned to Colony 9, and we finally resolved the issues of the Emmy Leader and got a bunch of new skills for Shulk in the process. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles. We're going to be returning to Colony 9, doing a bit more side questing before we move on to other places to see how much they've changed. See you guys then.